Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The construction of a surveyed crown requires that we not only create proper tooth contour to include occlusal rests, retentive areas, and reciprocating planes, but with the correct articulation and occlusal anatomy. Therefore, the working model with a silver-plated die must be mounted on a suitable articulator to the correct vertical dimension as well as to the correct centric occlusion and centric relation. In some cases of partial edentulism, where there are no posterior teeth in both arches, it is necessary to construct maxillary and mandibular stabilized base plates, register the vertical dimension and centric occlusion on the patient, and transfer this relation to the articulator. On this technic model, inasmuch as there are teeth opposing each other on one side of the arch, and teeth opposing the lower edentulous space on the other side, it is simpler to construct a bite block for the edentulous side and use the occluding teeth on the opposite side. The following supplies are needed. Scalpel, wax spatula, pink base plate wax, Bunsen burner, formatray powder and liquid, Vaseline, curb bite registration paste, mixing pad, tin fall substitute, green stick compound, tongue depressors, straight handpiece and motor, handpiece white fast cut stone, and an articulator. First, prepare a Duralay coping on the silver plated die. Transfer it to the prepared tooth on the Visodont and obtain the correct centric occlusion registration on the coping on the Visodont. Take the maxillary cast and wax out using the pink base plate wax any undercuts on the posterior teeth of the cast which would oppose the mandibular edentulous space. The wax should be flowed on evenly around the necks of the teeth, but not on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. The lingual undercuts should be blocked out in the same way. Apply a tinfall substitute, such as Alcoat or Cosep, with a good-sized brush over the cast in this area. The lubricant should cover the teeth, wax, and the gingival and palatal areas of the cast. Apply this coating liberally and allow it to dry. Mix the former tray powder and liquid to the correct proportions. While the resin is achieving its correct working consistency, lubricate your fingers with some Vaseline. Remove the former tray from the cup when it is ready Form a thick cylinder
and adapt it to the lubricated section of the maxillary cast. While the former tray still has working consistency, trim it back with a sharp scalpel to ensure that you do not lock the resin on the cast. At the same time, if necessary, build up the occlusal surface to form a platform about one inch high. Remove the bite block as soon as it has cured and trim the sharp edges and excess away with the fast cut stone. During the trimming procedure, place the bite block back on the maxillary stone cast so you can check it for fit, extent and stability. Now, place the bite block on the articulated Visidant maxillary model to be sure it fits. Close the Visidant and check to be sure the block does not contact the opposing edentulous ridge and that it is wide enough to oppose the width of the opposing edentulous ridge. When the bite block is acceptable, Lubricate the edentulous ridge of the mandibular cast with some Vaseline. Mix the curb bite registration paste to the correct consistency with a tongue depressor. Remove the bite block and place enough of the paste on the occlusal surface of the bite block to be sure you will have enough to contact the opposing ridge. Replace the bite block on the articulated maxillary model. While holding the bite block in position, guide the visidant into centric occlusion. Close it and, while holding the bite block in position and the visidant closed in centric occlusion, allow the paste to set for about five minutes. After the paste has hardened, remove the bite block and trim away any excess paste so you have a sharp and accurate registration of the crest of the edentulous ridge. Place the bite block on the stone maxillary cast and articulate the stone casts to check your registration. Examine the occlusion carefully. If you are satisfied with the occlusion, splint the stone cast together by using green stick compound and tongue depressors. Use enough compound to ensure that the casts will stay together during the mounting procedure. Be sure to place these tongue depressors on both sides of the arch.
Check your articulated casts against the articulation of the visidant to verify your registration. If the articulation of the casts and the visitant do not agree, the procedure must be repeated. Be sure an instructor checks the registration at this point. The bases of the stone cast should have been indexed prior to this step, for the mandibular cast has to be able to be separated and remounted frequently. Lubricate the base of the mandibular cast with either water or Vaseline. Mount the articulated casts on your articulator with plaster. Be sure the top of the incisal pin is flush with the upper member and the pin itself touches the incisal guide platform. The cast should be centered in the articulator and a simple method of accomplishing this is to place a strong rubber band around the articulator so it lies in the lower groove of the incisal pin and across the crossbar of the H of Hanno on the two condylar posts. Mount the cast so the incisal edge of the maxillary anteriors is even with the groove and the rubber band in the anterior and the posterior of the maxillary cast is slightly above the plane established by the rubber band. As you can see, the anteriors are level with the rubber band and the molars are raised approximately 10 degrees above the rubber band. After the casts are mounted, set the horizontal guidance at 20 degrees and the lateral guidance at 15 degrees. The incisal guidance should be set to match that of the casts. With this mounting, you can remove the mandibular cast so it can be placed on the surveyor while you wax up the crown to the correct contour and replace the cast on the articulator so you can carve the correct occlusal anatomy. Thus, the crown will be in harmony, not only with the partial denture, but with the patient's occlusion. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.